Uh, good morning, Professor Tootle. Good morning. So I um, was listening um, to our last podcast, uh, which is now on Spotify. So I guess we can call it a podcast rather than a Facebook and uh, YouTube thing. Um, uh, thank you, uh, leadership team. I was listening to it with my mom when I was pulling weeds in her yard. And she said, well, you guys are pretty good. And I'm not so certain about that. But it was actually interesting to hear it back. And we made some interesting comments regarding this uh, January 6th insurrection slash coup slash mess slash, you know, insanity, whatever we want to call it. I had mine, you had yours. Uh, it's, it was crazy, but it was also a very serious topic last week, correct? Yes. Yeah. Um, this one is not so serious. So uh, forgive me for looking California-esque on you. I've been gone all morning. I've been out on the trail. I just got back. I'm hungry. So I'm going to eat while you're talking. This is a little bit more flippant, um, uh, but just follow me for a second. Uh, oh, hey, let Bill Jerky in. He's a former uh, county commissioner and a former state legislator. Let, let He's very in. conservative. He's in. Yep. All right. Um, commissioner, which is a better title than representative. Jerky, welcome. Um, so, uh, Professor, this is really important. Myths urban legends, conspiracy theories. Um, uh, people talk about this kind of stuff. I mean, it's like probably more common than what we normally talk about, you know, politics and constitution and legal history and founding of our country. More people talk about weird stuff, UFOs, than they do what we like to talk about. But I'm hoping that you're going to be able to give some interesting historical perspective rather than a layman's perspective like me on myths, urban, le um, urban legends, legends, and conspiracy theories. So because this is so important, because people talk about it, we should probably give your bona fides, right? You are a, you have a degree in what? History, yeah. Uh, History, okay. Yeah. And you have a master's degree in? History, yeah. Oh, okay, and you have a PhD in? History, yeah. In history. And now is this any kind of history? Is it like Roman mythology history or is it a specific type of history? Um, so uh, it, just the PhD degree, you have to do four fields. My primary field was in um, US political, modern US political history. My second field is in US intellectual history. My third field was Euro European intellectual history. My fourth field was in Soviet history. And my cognate field was in American literature and American studies, so, or American okay. literature, yeah. So you're a subject matter expert. On, I mean, there's 330 million Americans. We all have an opinion. That's what it means to be an American. We have an opinion and damn it, we're fighting for it, right? We all have an opinion. And my opinion is equal to yours in, hist in US history, correct or no? I don't know. I mean, when it comes to specific facts, they're often, you know, because of the ease at which anybody can look something up, you know, there are a lot of people who have the ability to recall facts. What I really have is the ability to try to put those facts maybe into a better context than the average person. Okay. But you are a self-admitted and maybe others would describe you as a subject matter expert on U.S. history. Yeah. I mean, and it, it, with regards to today's topic, um, the subject Maybe, uh, don't go there. Don't ruin it for me. I won't ruin it. Right. You're a subject matter okay. expert on U.S. history, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. Tell me about Paul Bunyan, because I'm telling you, from the youngest age, I really like that. I think I was taught that in school. I don't think the kids in the playground gathered around and made up Paul Bunyan. I thought we were taught that. So tell me about Paul Bunyan. You're the historian, U.S. historian. Paul Bunyan was a man, a big man. Talk, talk to us about it. I don't know anything about Paul Bunyan. <laughs> You're kidding. Okay. All right. I, I got it. You how know, about, I know the name. I know the sort of, uh, well, how, story, but I don't know anything about. How history. about the big blue ox though? You've heard of him. Yeah. I remember there was a children's story I read about Paul Bunyan and babe, the, yeah, the, uh, the big blue ox. Yeah. I mean, so how, things I haven't so, thought about and, well, yeah, but this is important. This is I remember this as much as I remember the Salem witch trials. Now, tell me, did they all deserve to be burned at the stake or just some of them? <laughs> no, no, nobody was burned at the stake. I <laughs> learned that in school. You think I made that up? Yeah, that, um, I, I do know that one. And that's well, uh, but did I make it up or did I learn that? You think my uh, dad told me some fable? Yeah, somebody told you that. Right. Oh, you're kidding. But why do I think it's mostly real? 
Uh, you really want? Do, are, can I go deep now, or am I still? Yeah, you know, go ahead. Uh, uh, you're the historian. Tell me about the blue blue ox or the Salem witch trials. I don't care. Um, the way most human beings approach information is we walk around with a kind of narrative we construct for our own lives um, that include all of our lived experiences and you know, stuff we've heard. I mean, just whatever it is that makes you, you, right? And when we are confronted with a new piece of information, we typically only dig far enough um, to get to the point where that information is useful to us and then we stop. We stop looking any further. And so but is this across age and gender and race and religion and and it just everybody does it. It is a part of the human condition. And as far as I'm as far as I've ever encountered, again, I'm no different, right? I as you know, I'm not a neuroscientist, but I study enough neuroscience to, to learn what I need to learn and then move on with my life. But uh it, um but as far as I know, I have never heard of any distinctions between human beings in terms of um, how they process, um, uh, uh, turn information into a story, or and that, or that turns into you know uh, uh, how they how they engage in cognitive processes to that create biases and so so professor you you got this is great and we may have to do a second show but i'm telling you i've got a list of 200 myths legends and conspiracy theories we need to talk about in 20 minutes or less so this was great okay but, but so the bottom line is we all do it apparently left or right or conservative or liberal republican democrat we find a narrative and we hang on it so you so in the case of the salem witch trial thank you the story that you want to believe is that religious people are oppressive or that, you know, uh, and that, um, and you hear a version of the story that fits with that preconceived uh, notion. And you're like, oh, okay, that fits. And then you move on, <laughs> you know, but no one got burned. You're telling me no one got burned in the Salem witch trials. Yeah. Yep. At the stake, they were burned at the stake. Well, and not just that, I would say that the larger message of the witch trials is the exact opposite of what most people would say. Okay, let's keep on that for 30 seconds and that's all you got because I want to go to UFOs. Okay, well, I mean, the real message of the Salem witch trials is that there are always folk cultures and folk religions that go nuts. And in this case, the reason for the trial was because they wanted to put a stop to the local uh, nuttiness. So we typically think of this as, you know, the Puritans are crazy. Look, they're putting witches on trials. No. The Puritans were the were not crazy. They were the ones stopping the the craziness, not encouraging it. You're so, telling me that I really need to spend 15 minutes on the air, interweb to find out whether you're telling the truth or not. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let's go to Area 51. Okay, I've been there. It's a really interesting military base, and they have this big area that they map out on it that there's. There's nothing to see. And I guess if you Google it, I haven't, but I guess if you Google it, there's nothing to see. It is UFO land, right? Uh, well, I have no idea. I, I mean, I assume. Wait, what do you mean you're a historian? The UFOs didn't just start yesterday. They've been going along for a long time, Professor. Right. Well, and we've talked about this in previous episodes, but historians don't approach information the way that a normal person does. A, a normal person says, isn't it possible that, and then um, they fill in with whatever they're excited about, <laughs> you know? In other words, a normal person says, isn't it possible that aliens landed? And then they, and then they go and investigate that question and find a bunch of evidence that it's possible, right? But as if you're trying to be a historian or think like a historian, you start with facts well, but give some facts. There have been like, there's photos, there's videos, there's eyewitness testimony that Air Force has investigated. There's lots of facts. I mean, there's a file. Supposedly, former President Clinton, a conservative friend of mine, said, is it you, Bill? I think it was, it was Commissioner Jerky. I'm, forgive me, I didn't know you were on. Or I knew you were on, but I forgot you asked it. Commissioner Jerky says, President Clinton had a thing for UFOs. There's a big file on it. 
Well, UFOs right. certainly exist. Things fly around in the sky that that can't be identified. But um, those are UFOs, Professor. Uh, right. Well, an unidentified object that is flying through the air is a UFO. Uh, right. Scary. Other aliens and planets, and we're just well, being. But observed. now I'm not. I'm not necessarily with you on that next step. Oh, okay. Um, which is the you, if all we're doing is we're talking about facts. Are there things that human beings have seen in the sky that they have not identified? The answer is yes. Is that evidence that these things came from? intelligent life from another planet, I would say, no, there's no evidence of that. But hmm. there is evidence uh, that, um, that there are certainly um, things flying around in the sky that human beings can't identify. Can. I would say, I would, I've also uh, heard uh, uh, that uh, these are increasing with every possible year, you know, yeah. the, with yeah. every year, uh, because other militaries are testing drone type yeah. devices all the time and, and civilians are too and there's a crazy guy in a lawn chair in a balloon yeah I, aircraft are um seeing this stuff uh you know commercial aircraft and military pilots are seeing this stuff all over the world yeah uh, a lot more and some of them are lasers and some of them are explainable illuminati they exist right uh not that i know of well i read dan i think it was dan brown dan brown wrote a book about it yeah um i i yeah. It was a good book, by the way. You should read some non or fiction. It was fun. Well, it, I think what's scary is oh, I should I should have, that's a good that's a good point um, because one of the most persistent myths among uh, the elite left is the belief that there is a small group of people who control who control politics and world events. Now, is that George Soros or is that the Bilderbergers? Uh, I don't know. Because yeah, neither do I. I'd have to, well, I'd have I to look at how they worded the, but it was a, it was a shot. It was, I think the most common, oh, I, I'd have to look this up, but. Oh, you're talking about the left. They think the Koch brothers control the world. Right. But, but, but there's a very, um, but it, it is the most commonly believed economic conspiracy theory. Mm. On the left is that there's a small group of people who actually control and manipulate the economy. But, but that's not the 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 racist, the anti-Jewish thing, is it? Or is that it, something it can else? Be. I mean, it, it yeah. often manifests itself in that. But. Yeah. Um, well, I don't want to get too serious, although that's actually a worthwhile topic in and of itself. Um, I got to go to George Washington's teeth. You're, I mean, this is right in your subject matter expert expertise, right? You studied this. This is probably a whole like semester in college. They were wooden, right? Uh, it's not a semester in college, and it's not something that I've ever spent a lot of time on. But um, uh, you know, I think they're uh, wooden. No, they weren't wooden. Well, I was taught that in school. Uh, they, I mean, again, I, I, that's not something that gets me, uh, keeps me awake at night. Because what what happens when you're teaching is that. Um, what what the teacher is trying to communicate is that they were false teeth and you know and they were made out of different materials and you know like and, and you're just saying i heard wood and remembered that but they weren't yeah. um but there that, that, that's not something that bugs me as much as other persons okay how about this the most famous person now we're going to legends a little bit because I, but I think this is true we'll see what you say um, the most famous founder slash framer in the history of the world from an American perspective, the most famous American at that time frame is Benjamin Franklin. Um, in, in his own lifetime, certainly. Yeah, in his lifetime. Yeah, but it wasn't George Washington. It wasn't Adams or Madison. It was Benjamin Franklin. He was the right. most famous, well-known yes. American. He was by far the most famous American in the world. And deservedly so. Yes, Absolutely. I mean, he was a, a diplomat and he was a scientist. And, and this isn't legend. This was kind of fact, right? He is worthy of emulating. Um, he was mostly famous as a scientist. Uh-huh. Yeah. So any legends about him? I mean, did he fly a key from a kite? Did he? I mean, no, that's not really. Oh, wait, I learned that. <laughs> yeah. But again, it's... Um, there's a, when we talk about the like contextualization of truth, 
uh, we've talked about this in previous episodes, what led, in political leadership, the difference between sophistry and state, statesmanship, which is um, if, you're, if you're leaving out parts of the truth in service of the truth, then we call that statesmanship. But if you're leaving out parts of the truth in service to a lie, then that's sophistry. Um, because every bit of summary requires leaving stuff out. So are you leaving stuff out in a, in a way that leads someone to an incorrect conclusion? Or are you leading, leaving stuff out in such a way that leads to a correct conclusion? And that's actually a really important difference. And in the case of Benjamin Franklin, yeah, you know, there was the key, the kite, whatever. Uh, that's not true. And the, the um, you know, the I cannot tell a lie. For yeah, God. that was Washington. Thank you, George Washington. Or, the, well, or you know, his wooden teeth or, you know, uh, a lot of these things are in service to a larger truth. And thus they don't. I don't lose a lot of sleep over those kinds of. Okay. Well, I didn't mean to go serious, keep on serious for a minute. I, I've got a bunch of other stuff, cults and CIA and I mean, the, Oh God, yeah. there's a whole cattle mutilations. There's a lot of stuff, uh, but is it important to have something to believe in um, myths? I mean, uh, our founder, do we just want to tear them down? They're just like me, horrible sinner. You actually have that on your Facebook profile. You're a sinner in a world of sin. Uh, I mean, but, yeah, Franklin is just as bad as Professor Tootle, and so is Jefferson and, and Lincoln. Boy, he was a problem, too. Uh, uh, or, or can we actually believe in people and look at their best sides? Is it important to have a myth of greatness, or perhaps they were great? I'm arguing that Benjamin Franklin was great. Uh, I know there's a bunch of people in the world. Benjamin Franklin was a great one, and so was Jefferson, because he was the first one that penned those words. Other people thought of it. There was a lot of people thinking about it, but he pinned it and gathered some other people around that agreed with it. And I think that changed the course of human history. So I'd argue that Jefferson was great. Is it important to have that legend, even though he may not have been so great? I just, there's, I think it's important to distinguish what we mean when we say a legend, you know, like it, it, there's absolutely nothing wrong with telling the truth and, and reassessing our context, you know? and saying, okay, well, this comes up, let's assess it in part of the broader context. The problem with why that it's so easy to lie about people is you can take one thing out of context and blow it out of proportion and say, this is who this person is and say, well, this is a true fact. And it takes hard work and a lot of study to actually create the context. So there's nothing wrong with a... Um, you know, a John Ford Western it, about the West is um, uh, mythology. Um, and uh, there are legends, but there are certain things that, you know, you realize like 80, some, some, I don't know if this is right, but like 80% of the, those armies were made up of Irish immigrants. And one of the things in the John Ford Westerns is he always had, you know, Irish people in there. And you say like, well, eh, all right, you know, that is actually true to the broader context. There's, there's nothing wrong in storytelling with giving people um, narrative stories and truth that are based on, you know, a larger truth. Uh, okay, well, so let me take the flip of your point, because I, I think I'm understanding your point, but let me take the flip of the point. I have friends, and I don't, and I'm not saying strangers, some acquaintance I met once. I mean, true friends. I like them. They're friends who say stuff on Facebook, and who knows, it's just Facebook, but they, you know, I mean, it's actually worse or better when you put it in writing and put out to the world than just telling somebody in a private party. They say, let's start with the premise that if you've ever owned a slave, your opinion is worthless or you're not worthy of emulating. And I see that, and I, I kind of get their point, uh, but I just think they're just doing a huge disservice to humanity. I think, they're, I think they're hurting their own cause, not just my cause of believing we're a great country. I just believe it's, ah, yikes, I wish they wouldn't say that kind of thing. I think it sucks. I think it's bullshit. And I, 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 can we say bullshit on um, Spotify? Yeah, I think it'll get us an explicit rating. But Okay. Oh, well, then strike that. Uh, I just think it's a shame. Um, I think we should, we all make mistakes. 
And so it, it's nice to have some legends. Well, let me give you an idea of why that's also a mistake. You know, um, Ulysses S. Grant was part of, you know, his family was anti-slavery. Uh, Grant was anti-slavery, but his wife was from a slave owning family. And once he got married, you know, he stayed at his wife's parents' plantation. And at, at a certain point, he actually inherited a slave. So I'll give you a good example of a lie that people say all the time in order to discredit Grant. They say, you know, he was the last president to own a slave. Well, it, Grant technically inherited a slave when he was living in poverty and could have sold that slave, but didn't. He manumitted him and, assumed, and gave the, Grant to that slave his freedom. So while you are technically correct, <laughs> And your friends, Adam context. Yeah, you, your friends would say, we don't have to listen to anything Grant has to say about slavery because he owned a slave. And you say, really? He inherited him and freed him. And that would be enough to say we shouldn't listen to anything he has to say on the issue? I, I find that, to, I mean, in the song Amazing Grace was written by a guy who was a slave, a slaver who realized that what he was doing was wrong. I, I, you know, the, to say that, um, uh, we shouldn't listen to the people who, because they had specific experiences, I think those, we need to put those experiences in their proper context and then weigh it out. Because the other piece of it is, I, I would just say, you must have a, a tremendous amount of confidence um, about everything that you're doing in your own life. You know, the um, every piece of you know, uh, everything you're touching that might have been made in China was slave labor. You know, in other words, I, I'm, I'm, I'm all over the place, but you have no idea how the people of the future are, are going to morally condemn you. Uh, because I'm sure that both of us and every single person alive today is currently engaged in anywhere from a half dozen to a dozen activities that or people, thousands i mean who knows i mean that, yeah that people yeah. in the future will specifically morally condemn and say how could they how could they have been doing this and i don't know if it's using fossil fuels or if it's eating meat or wearing leather shoes or those uh, are three things you're just trying to poke commissioner jerky from weld county man all three of those things ah. living, how about living in a single family home or right or yeah or kentucky bluegrass in colorado yeah right. having a lawn right these are yeah. all things that we, we might and um to say that in that you we're going to remove somebody's life from its context and say it doesn't matter that, um, um, you know, it doesn't matter. We don't have to listen to anything Professor Toodle said about uh, the planting of native trees in, in the valley because he also maintained a front lawn. Uh, you know, like, that's absurd. That's an absurd position to take. To so, Professor, I have three minutes left. And, and maybe we should have done three shows on this. One on myths, one on conspiracy theories, uh, and, and one on legends. Uh, but I got to throw in zombies. They're real, correct? It's not as far as I know. I, what do you mean? How would you, have you not seen it? We talk about zombies. Do you not have real friends? Everybody, there's video games, there's bets, there's movies. We, of course they're real. But I, t I sort of take that as a, um, a, a sign of we want to have violent video games, but there's probably social pressure to not have people shooting human beings anymore in video so it's got to be a zombie so they create aliens or zombies or things like that to shoot you know? um y2k what what was that just like a crazy conspiracy theory and we spent billions of dollars fixing every everybody bought a new computer because they yeah. were going to die was that just like a weird foible mistake or no that was a conspiracy theory because uh, now yeah, there's new computers it, tracking us it, i guess there was an element of truth to it that um that you know, computers, we didn't know what was going to happen to computers that had been set to flip over uh, at the, in the year 2000. Um, I don't, but I, there were probably millions of separate conspiracy theories. But, you, 
you know, I can't keep track of all the conspiracy theories. No, there's millions of them. Pearl Harbor, right? We knew. Yeah. Didn't we know? Um, You're the historian. I think we knew, actually. I think the president knew. Well, intelligence had indicated that some kind of attack was happening somewhere, but our, um, but as far as the, it, you know, the claim that Franklin Roosevelt, right. the president of the United States, deliberately allowed for the attack on Pearl Harbor to take place. That is false. Huh. Patriot Act? Really? Come on. It's taken away all our liberties, and we all agreed with it. We all wanted that. We Let's take away our liberties. Well, I mean, Patriot Act did take away a lot of liberties. So. Well, but we all like that, right? A conservative, liberal alike. We all like that. Uh, I don't know. I, I think there are a lot of parts of it that haven't worked out so well right skull and bones it you know there's a secret society running all this place were you a member of skull and bones no but how about the masonic lodge i was a d malay when growing up i don't even know what that means is that a junior masonic lodge yeah, yeah. uh-huh i guess i do I'm know a little bit don't i the, yeah but. and so you're secretly controlling the world with me how about the american enterprise institute where we met is okay. this like this is our 44th or more show that we've done on a variety of topics, the most controversial in the country today. Maybe this is a whole conspiracy plot. Tony, you're a little more liberal than Professor Tootle and I. Do you think yeah. we're like trying to manipulate you? Aren't you less liberal because of us now? Come yeah. on, Tony. Yes, what? yes you're, you are. You're manipulating me to be less liberal. Yes. Yeah. Skull and bones. Right. Skull and bones, baby. Well, I do remember that um, before I was even formally associated with, and I'm not still for, I'm not formally associated with AEI, you know, they don't give me money or anything. Um, but um, uh, years ago, when I was still in grad school, we were constantly- what, what, Which grad school? Uh, Ohio University. And I was there with Tom Brasino, the military historian who, we, and we used to say um, that every morning, a hologram of Dick Cheney, the, ah. the emperor from um, uh, from Star Wars. Yeah. Every day we would get, uh, it, and it would be beamed in from the American Enterprise Institute, ah. funded by the Koch brothers. Ah. That's when we would receive our instructions on what to say that day. Yeah. Uh, and, and how to act and what we were going to do that day. But every day it came as a hologram. Being oh, you guys crack me up. This is going to, this, this show when enough people watch it is going to start a new conspiracy theory. Cause I'm telling you what I, uh, Dick Cheney or vice president Cheney came to Centennial airport. I think that's where I was at. I was chairman of the airport and he came and spoke to a couple hundred people and I went and my, and I don't mean to disparage Congressman or vice president Cheney. I don't, but, but I watched it among a couple hundred people. I'll go, Oh my God. This person is really powerful. That's that was my. I was just going. Oh my God! This guy knows the inner workings of the country and the world. Oh my God! That that was my whole. I don't even remember what he said. I was just going. Wow! This guy is power. Yeah, uh, he's no joke. Uh, yeah, I, I, um, he's a smart guy. Uh, but I didn't know he was beamed from AEI into your graduate class. Wow! I got swept up in a. A couple of times, I guess, anytime you're involved in politics, people will accuse you of being a part of, you know, different conspiracy theories. But um, I remember I showed up on some website called Uncoke My Campus. Oh, my gosh. Because, the Coke Brothers yeah, or, or Cocaine? I had, uh, Pre-COVID, I had, there was a mentorship program that, um, that included a speaker who would be who would come out. And um, the funding for that speaker series was from... Uh, an entity <laughs> that received funding from uh, the Co one of the Coke Foundation, you know, and um, but as it appeared on this website, it made it look like I had received a check for I forget what it was thirty eight thousand dollars from you know as, as part of like a bribe or something. Um, but again, the larger context of that was that no, they sponsor a speaker series where the speaker gets that money i received nothing uh and i have never you know uh, taken any money from it but it made it see the way it was presented on this conspiracy website was that i had been personally receiving money from you know one of the coke foundation things or something uh, uh 
uh, which is certainly never as far as I know. I, I don't know. Maybe I have, but I, I doubt it. I guess I shouldn't say never, but uh, as far as I know, I haven't. Um, I, I'm way over, so I'm going to do this. you got to answer these in like five seconds or less. Five seconds there, or less. Is there any element of, in, in the following like 10 topics, I'm going to go through my list. It's great. I haven't gotten to like 90% of these. Um, is there any truth that there's a conspiracy theory, a legend associated with U.S. Civil War? Um, the U S civil war was an actual conspiracy of slave owners to overthrow. So that is an actual conspiracy. Yeah. And that's actually something we've talked about and we should talk about in the future because we still don't understand it as a country. World no. trade center, world trade center bombing. No, there's no conspiracy theory. That is just what it is. Yeah. Love or, that. Or, there's nothing true to the conspiracy theory. Though. Yeah, love that. Thank you. Um, CIA, do they do some pretty secretive stuff? And I yeah. know the Russians and the, and the and Chinese are listening to this. They'll listen to this and go, aha. But isn't it true that CIA does some pretty secretive stuff around the world? Yes, they engage yeah. in operations of, uh, in the world. Cool. Mafia exists? Yes. Yeah. Um, COVID, was that a conspiracy? Uh, well, it depends on what, I don't know yet. Uh, <laughs> well, fair enough. Okay. I'll accept that. Cause we've done a show on that. I think. Yeah. I, I don't, we don't know enough about the origins or stuff that yeah. I've seen. So. Uh, and I don't want to go here cause this is worth like an hour. We should probably do a show on this. The Holocaust deniers. Uh, just Holocaust. give me a line on that. What's, what's going on with that? Racism, old school racism. Uh, yeah. So we should probably, how about anti-Catholics? There's a whole. Well, the Catholic Church exists, uh, right? And but there's a whole school of anti-Catholics, though, right? Yeah, and uh, I, I, so I don't know. I'd have to hear the specific. Yeah, topic. fair enough. And, and the same thing with anti-Semitic stuff, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, but like there are people who are Jewish in the world, but no, they're not in control of the world or anything. Right. Like that. Yeah. Um, who's the best um, athlete in the whole world? And historically, he was the best athlete. Was it Pheidippides or Muhammad Ali? I mean, who? I have a best athlete ever. Yeah. Um, There's a ton of weird stuff on the internet. I know because I Googled it. Who is the? Jim Thorpe. I, I don't yeah, know. Jim Thorpe's a good one. Yeah. Um, Jim Brown. Um, mm. I, I, Cattle I, mutilations. What's that? Cattle mutilations. Real? I don't know anything about. I've never oh, you got to Google that. It's really interesting. Um, you know, here we know, we have the chupacabra. The, the oh yeah. Oh, Bigfoot. We, have we talked about Bigfoot yet? Or it's different than the goat sucker. I mean, the chupacabra. I don't even know what that is. A goat sucker. That sounds gross. Yeah. Um, there are real things that have been pretty brutal. Eugenics. Yeah, that's real. It's uh, yeah, real. It's not a conspiracy. I mean, it was real, and it sucks, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 part. It's the uh, I've, I've got a I've got a book on my shelf for the, that I'm halfway through about uh, eugenics. Yeah. Yeah, J. Edgar, J. Edgar Hoover did some weird stuff. Uh, ish, but a lot of that stuff's pretty overblown. Yeah, the Teamsters in Hoffa. You don't think they're weird? Uh, I mean, there's there's some real stuff there. <laughs> okay. All right. The Iraq War, real or not? Well, I don't know. The war was real, but should we have gone or not? Is that a conspiracy theory? If the military-industrial complex? War, yeah, that's not true. The, I mean, the, the, the yeah, that's pretty well. Uh, what? Document. The, oh, that we didn't go to war over, like, I don't know. There's a million different conspiracy theories regarding the Iraq War. but Right, right. Basically, yeah, all over the place. On a very basic level, what the Bush administration was saying publicly is what ha was happening privately. Okay, fair enough. How about the Kennedy assassination? CIA plot? No. Uh, Lee Oswald acted alone. No evidence to suggest anything to the contrary. How about the Lincoln? Lincoln was killed by Booth, yeah. Yeah, but was that like a big thing? Or yeah, that, was was it part of a, that was part of a larger conspiracy that failed, yeah. Okay, cool. Moon landing? Real. <laughs> really? You're just going to say that factually? Yeah. All right. New World Order. By the way, uh, Professor, I had a Republican precinct leader just lived six houses down from me. I think I told you this before. Who said I was going to be the first person he was going to assassinate. Wow. 
Me? Yeah. Why? Because I have a political science degree and a law degree and I'm in the military and I'm running for county commissioner and I won. So he what, thought I was part of the trilateral commission. I'm not really famous enough to be assassinated. You would just be murdering me. <laughs> okay. So that's crap. That, that, that's all that stuff is crap or no, there's some elements of truth to it. To, to which part? The... Well, gosh, I've got so many. I, yeah. I, I, I have a hard time figuring out teapot dome. No, that was real. Okay, cool. Tuskegee, uh, Tuskegee Airmen and the syphilis thing. Um, it, Just sad, isn't it? Just plain uh, sad. And, but also, yeah, uh, mostly real. But there are, you know, the real part has gotten spun off into stuff that isn't real. But, you know. Right. Fluoride and water. No, that's not real. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, no, it's real. There's fluoride and water. Oh, yeah. But the, but the, there's a lot of crazy stuff associated with fluoride. And so, water. Uh, Professor, this is just like the I, I spent, as you can tell, an hour or two on the interweb. So I'm an expert on on this subject. Yeah. There's just I mean, I mean there's books written and, and period. I, I spent there was so much data download on me that I just couldn't even believe it. So what is an average citizen? supposed to do with all this data yeah i mean and by the way i like bigfoot i think that's kind of cool because when i go hiking or trail running in the mountains of colorado i, I that's kind of cool that bigfoot's out there with me i i i actually don't mind that but and, and ufos are cool and there's and i kind of wonder who's in power i mean there's all sorts of things i think about but what are what are we as a thoughtful citizen of the america supposed to be thinking about regarding legends conspiracy theories I mean, well, well, what should we be thinking about how, how do we i know we started with this but i'm way overboard how do we and we're going to open up to q a how do we end this what what's your plea to us to be good citizens or should we just let a, allow a dictator to tell us what to think well um i would just say that if there's this if it, there's a conspiracy the believing in it fills you with hate you should stop uh and arthur brooks or jesus where, where do you come up with that or stephen doodle i just thought i just came up with that I okay fair enough yeah i mean i i uh just to get back to like uh how i initially became you know my on, followed my own you know political path was when i was young i was studying a lot of stuff with regards to world war ii and one of the things i concluded pretty early on is that nazis were bad and you know as you as i began studying the elements of you know um what it is that can make regular people engage in evil uh one of the things that i started how i started sort of processing information is that if there's anything that can lead down that path uh, just take a minute and reassess it <laughs> or more than a minute i mean take a day a week a month a year i mean really pause stop it it doesn't take too much to ask you know a handful of questions that will at least stop you from going down a crazy path you know um uh you know ask the old thomas soul questions at what cost mm -hmm. compared to what where's your evidence and and usually that stuff just falls apart like a dried up old broken leaf in your hand as soon as as soon as you begin saying well i think that one of the things that's interesting take just the kennedy assassination that um the uh the number of americans who believe in the kennedy assassination being a part of a conspiracy is between 60 and 80 percent you know depending on the year which is just uh amazing and um but the number of actual academic historians who study the Ken kennedy administration who believe that anything other than Lee Oswald acting alone. So I'm defining this as his people with PhDs in history who specifically have a specialization in the Kennedy administration, who have published on the Kennedy administration in academic journals who don't have a specific financial interest in promoting conspiracy theories, who have investigated this issue if you know that 60 to 80% of re regular people believe that there's a conspiracy, what percentage of historians who have studied it believe that there is a conspiracy? 
And the actual answer is zero. It's not just 0%, it's zero. There's not a single one. So there's not a single historian who approaching the topic the way a historian would approach it, which is to say, where is our evidence and then build a narrative. There isn't a single person who's ever done that, who's concluded anything other than Lee Oswald acting alone. So professor, I, 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 I want to personalize this for a second. Then we're opening up to Q and A. So get ready team. Uh, my parents bought their house when I was born because I was the fifth child in 1966 and they needed a bigger house, a 1400 square foot house. I was the fifth child, seven of us in a 1400 square foot house. Yeah, I get it. And so they bought it for 17,000 and, and I don't know, my mom's still alive at 91. Maybe it's worth a half million now because it's never really been updated. Maybe it could be three quarter of a million after six, 56 years. And I live a block away from her. Um, and so I, we bought our house for 72,000 25 years ago. And maybe ours is worth three quarter of a million or a million now. And, but I, the number of people think that I'm in a, like bought and sold or something uh, because I'm either involved in the Republican party, the Democrats hate me because I've been a lifelong Republican and the Republicans hate me because now I've been unaffiliated for six years and they think I'm being bought and sold by somebody. I, it, it almost is humorous. I, I just crack me. You've been to my home. You've seen, uh, you've seen my cars Up in your, in your guest room. Yes. Yeah. You slept in my, which was right next to my master bedroom. I mean, right next, it's not in a different wing. It's a, it's a nice home, but it's still just a remodeled 1950s home. I, I kind of get why people are resentful or mad or, and Bill, Bill uh, Cong, uh, Commissioner George, I've been to your home and it's nice. Thank you for allowing me in your home. And you may be a millionaire. I have no idea. Or maybe you're not. It's none of my damn business. But I, I just don't get all the anger and, and bitterness. And yes, I know some millionaires and I actually know some billionaires. But I, I don't get all the like conspiratorial. I get having a legend. I want to believe in somebody. I want to believe in Abraham Lincoln and Thomas Jefferson and Ben Franklin and Madison and, and Hamilton. And even though they disagreed, I still want to, I want to believe in an idea that people are worth it. And, and for some reason, a lot of people are just embittered. And, and, and on conspiracy theories, there's a plus. I believe in Bigfoot. I don't. But I think it's fun to believe in Bigfoot or aliens or whatever. But can you give us some advice? Uh, you already said, don't be hatred or be loving. Is there any other advice on how to take all this weird stuff and put it into context? Well, I think what's, I mean, he raised so many thought-provoking points. I could go... So the first part is about people believing that you've been bought and sold. Uh, you know, I would say that I, everyone can be influenced. Uh, sure. But you influence me. And so does Commissioner Jerky. And so yeah. does Tony and Steve. Everybody influences me. Yeah. And, and, and my behavior is often changed by financial incentives. Like that's, that's reality. But the idea that somebody could be bought and sold also implies that that you know that there's somebody who who is willing to exchange their morality for money uh and i know a lot of people and i'll even say you know anyone who's got a few gray hairs hmm. has probably had someone close to them with a major health crisis hmm. and has said to themselves I would give everything I had in order to make this go away for this person who I love. And nothing else matters to me other than the health of this other human being. And so um, the idea that, that, that money is <laughs> the primary motivating factor and that you can buy and sell people for money. Yeah, you can buy and sell some people for money, but not everyone. Uh, and a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of people don't orient their lives that way. The other thing that I think is amazing about studying history is that once you begin studying these people in context, the truth is so much more amazing. Mm. You know, the, it's not that these people were perfect human beings who achieved these great things for all of humankind. It's that regular flawed people did it. Is that the person- Oh, isn't that a great point? I love that. Say that again. 
it's it's not that perfect human beings achieved these great ends for humanity. It's that the that flawed people did it. That 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 the you know the person who penned a note to their back saying you know I'm gonna go die in order to end the slave aristocracy in the South. You know that was a regular person. Uh, and one of the things that you have to sort of cope with as when you study the past is that the great acts of good and the great acts of evil were committed by regular people. Mm. And, um, the, and really understanding that gives you a greater understanding, I think, to the fragility of civilization, you know, because you realize how much of it, so much of it is luck, so much of it, but how much of it is the human spirit at its best you know, overcoming the human spirit at its worst. And how you know, these are all the questions that we grapple with. But it's, it's all, it, it, it leads to, you know, um, you know, certain feelings about conspiracy theories and stuff like that. But conspiracy theories are also an incredible weapon of evil, because the, because you can create a conspiracy theory that conforms with a confirmation bias pretty quickly. And for a real historian to do real work takes decades. And so somebody on the internet can say, isn't it possible that blah, blah, blah. And it would take a real historian doing real work 10 years. And it would take 50 historians arguing with that guy, you know, it, uh, decades to think about it and put it into its real context. So it's not, um, it, it doesn't, it's coming up with a lie is easy. <laughs> Telling the truth is hard and takes time. So I would just say maybe in your private life, weigh the contextualized, mm -hmm. uh, con thoughtful conversation more heavily than you would weight a bumper sticker. Lovely. Although I still like Bigfoot rules or, or any of those kind of things. But lovely. Yeah. Okay, so I've gone way overboard, Professor. So uh, friends, please forgive me. We always want to make sure there's time for Q&A. Um, uh, Kirstie, Kirstie, you are the first time caller, and I know it's not calling, I, uh, old time shock jock radio. Uh, first time caller, for, uh, or long time listener, first time caller. Uh, Christy, if you have a question, please take yourself off the internet or awesome. off the microphone at least. You don't have to take yourself off video. Oh, you do have a question. Chrissy, what's your question or comment on anything we've talked about in the last 50 minutes? Um, I'm busy enjoying and listening. Uh, <laughs> I, I am honest to a fault, and so I really don't subscribe to conspiracy. Wait, but aren't you like an aerospace engineer CEO or something? I know you're retired, I think. I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't followed you entirely, but is there, isn't that you? Yes, I well, I'm I'm a retired uh, CEO, and my degree is civil engineering. Yes, now okay. I'm a, so I'm shocked that you're not a conspiracy theorist. I'm shocked. Well, Please continue. Well, you don't have to be too shocked because I do remember that I I also chaired the Federal Reserve Board for this region during the whole <laughs> yeah. meltdown. So, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I you know I've I've witnessed a lot of things, but I am so, absolutely so, not a so, conspiracy. So, Oh, so sorry to interrupt you. I got to ask is since you have so I'm sorry. I've never I'm the first person in the world that's asked this from a former Federal Reserve board member. So is Bigfoot real? I have not witnessed a Bigfoot, but I I have information on UFOs. <laughs> we'll do a new show. Anyways, forgive me for being flippant with you. Uh, Chris, what's your question? Um, I really don't have one. I know you called on me, but I'm enjoying listening and I'm agree that there probably should be more time and more episodes of this because I, yeah, I, I find the whole thing really fascinating. Yeah, uh, you're so kind. Tell us about Bigfoot, Christy. Tell oh, us about Bigfoot. Commissioner Jerky, go ahead. I wanted to tell us about Bigfoot. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, keep going. I've not, I've, I've still not seen Bigfoot. I, you know, you I, I'm. But you said uh, UFOs. Yeah, I did say UFOs. I actually, my father who uh, was in the army um, actually uh, witnessed and has the tracing. I have the tracing sitting here actually on my bedroom floor of, wow. uh, of tracking UFOs while he was head of the Chicago air defense during the Korean war. 
I love that. Yeah. I love that. Um, I, I'm a big fan of yours, Chrissy. Thanks for uh, calling in for the first time. We've been to, I think this is our 50th show, but thank you for finally joining us. Uh, Professor Tootle, do you have a question for a former member of the Federal Reserve Board? Well, I would just say that, you know, uh, she's probably been the subject of a million conspiracy <laughs> theories. You, know, when you think about the conspiracy <laughs> theories, you know, about who the Federal Reserve, I bet all, yeah. half the Illuminati stuff is, the, is probably about her, you know? Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Uh, Chrissy, thanks for your service. Thank you, sir. All right. Commissioner Jerky. And I know I didn't call you representative because I think commissioner is a higher rank than uh, representative. Because you were one. <laughs> John, we've lost you. Oh, he wants to know if you have a question. I can see that, but he, yeah, he wasn't making any sound anymore. Yeah. But no, I didn't really have questions so much. It was mostly just fun to listen to. But it, 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 I guess the UFO thing is most interesting to me, uh, simply because if there wasn't something out there, it sure would be a big waste of space, as they say <laughs> in the movie Contact. Hmm? So, you know, what's up with that, Professor? Why would there be such a big waste of space if there wasn't something out there? Uh, I don't know. You know, the, one of the things that um, when you contemplate the vastness of space, one of the other things I always think is important is to contemplate the vastness of time um, because <laughs> these things are both um, uh, kind of stretch in all directions forever. So um, I, it's not, it, it, to me, it is entirely plausible that, um, that we would not, that we would be alone in the universe at this time because time is infinite in both directions so i uh, you know it, it uh, you know people make this argument about the vastness of space and i always just say you're right but also consider this other thing that is also vast time so uh commissioner jerky i'm going to be um because we're doing this show and we're both former county commissioners so i'm going to use a person uh point of personal privilege. Um, you probably think we agree on 60% of things and, and 10 or 20% are irrelevant and 20% you vigorously disagree with me. Um, that's my instinct. I'm telling you, I think we probably agree on 90% of things and only disagreed on 10%. Now, my conservative friends are going to go, John, you're whacked. Commissioner Jerky is a true Republican. You're a rhino. Will you tell me from a religious perspective, what do you mean by you, the space, time and space of the galaxies and universe? No, God created Earth and we're one planet. I don't remember anything else in the Bible about any other planets having Earth life. So I'm putting you on the spot. Commissioner Jerky, you're a friend of mine. I love you. I do. Tell me uh, what from a historian or what well, you're. What are you? You're an engineer. What are you? You're a farmer. I'm a plant former plantation owner. <laughs> you are not. You're from Colorado. You didn't have a plantation in you Colorado. Christmas trees. Oh yeah. Well, that's not a plantation. Yeah, but anyway, give a reaction to this because Bill, I've always liked you, and it's been 20 years, and I know you've been mad at me. Well, I fool you oh. now and then to liking me. So. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, give a reaction to all this. You ask the professor a question. Answer it yourself. What do you think? So, so we got to get back to the 60-90 thing. So I think I probably agree with you about 90% of the time yeah. in politics. I yeah. think it would be real close to 90. Yeah. 10%, uh, probably not. Uh, right. I would say that we, that we probably disagree on style points and strategy. No doubt. I'm, I'm an oddball, though. You're a normal person. I'm an oddball, so I give you all that. Admittedly, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but, yeah, you raised a great question. Uh, we can get into the biblical and all. Uh, obviously, you've got, you know, creation. I think what creation points to, though, in my mind, is superior. A uh, superior party out there. We call him God. I call him God, obviously, who... And you look at, at, at the nature of, of, of the world, you look at the nature of all of us sitting here talking to each other across who knows where all, and you look at, at 
the notion of intelligent design versus the notion of, of pure chaos and big bang saying, and therefore for absolutely no reason at all out of nothing, sprung <laughs> forth all kinds of matter out into nothingness, which we'll now call the universe. And for some reason that none of us would begin to understand, some of the little nothingness hunks of steel or hunks of rock floating out there in the universe began to be able to do things like rotate around each other and generate light and energy from some of the bigger ones and on and on and on. Until we're talking today, yeah. And I can't buy into any of the notion of there not being a superior force out there in the, in the world, in the universe, that created all this. I mean, how in the world would any of us explain life coming into, 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 into fruition uh, without some kind of a intelligent design that would have caused it all? So we're in a whole different world than what we're you know, going to talk about, you know, from John Wilkes Booth to aliens and so on. But uh, I guess that's my philosophy on, on, on basically believing some level that there's superior life and, and the superior yeah. uh, intelligent and, design that created all this to happen. And Commissioner, I asked that very intentionally because, um, Professor, I think it, it lends to all sorts of the legitimate and illegitimate theories and ideas and wackadoodle stuff, both pro and con of the human relation. And so I really, truly do like Bill and love him uh, but we are different um and but but part of his conspiracy theories or notions may be different than mine and and you've talked a lot about that professor in the past from what we've just talked about is there some theme that you can warn uh, uh sew together uh, weave together and do a well, I guess there, there are a lot of different ways that makes that everything he was saying just made me think about context, how important the uh, context is, you know, and when you start talking about religious issues, I, you know, I say, well, there's a reason why I'm a Presbyterian is that God gave us these um, elements that we are expected to contextualize, you know, the evidence of, of, uh, the, of the Bible, but also the human experience and also the world as created by God. And we don't just take one of these things out of context. We must make them all work together. And uh, it's a process of, of using these different points of evidence. But I was also reminded that of conversations I've had with the most thoughtful atheists uh, I know always end up resembling where the most thoughtful um, uh, 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 religious believers end up. Uh, and I was, you know, how you contextualize even a disagreement, um, because it, it, one, one of the things that um, Commissioner Jerky, uh, if I'm allowed to call him that, uh, brought up is in just to sort of, if I were summarizing one of the things he was uh, discussing is, how do you view this miracle of life as it exists right now? Uh, and how do you put the, this into a context? Um, one person might say, isn't it a miracle that we are all here at the same time discussing these things in peace? And another person who doesn't uh, and says it must be uh, God, right? Uh, and the other person says, uh, no, it's just a miracle uh, that it happened because of the vastness of time. And I don't know that either of those notions necessarily lead to a life of self-delusion when approached properly. Uh, because as long as both people are, um, uh, are, are seeking to put the truth into their proper context, you'll find that the, that the, um, uh, it, the, the end result of both philosophies should probably be humility because they end with you saying, well, I don't know. <laughs> you know? Uh, and any thoughtful person has to, has to get to the point where they say, oh, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, and that, but you know, that, that shouldn't lead into um, you know, despair uh, and uh, an existential crisis. Um, hmm. it, it says, no, 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 we, we have to keep working on this. Yeah, one of my favorite Episcopal priests told me that advice. 
I asked him a very hardball question, and he goes, "I don't know." Yeah, and and I like that actually. I I, I could accept that. <laughs> anyway, I, I, I don't know how that helps with conspiracies, legends, and uh, so Bart, um, Steve, and Tony, uh, Bill. Thank well, here's you. Here's how it fits in with conspiracy theories. People Please. Who in conspiracy theories are unwilling to accept "I don't know" as an answer. <laughs> there are people who say, no, there is an answer and I know what it is. You know, they, you'll never hear a conspiracy theorist say, I have no idea. They will find and, you know, they will insert into this gap uh, certainty that, that is not deserved. That's helpful. We have six minutes left to be the longest show in our 43 shows. So Bart, Tony and Steve, try not to get us over six minutes. Bart, what's up? <laughs> You know, I just have a quick comment on, uh, you know, this has been a great discussion because it's so, um, it's so uncharacteristic of our typical discussions, <laughs> which is great. Yeah. You know, one of, one of the reasons I think these conspiracy theories resonate so much with people is that for some reason we have this need in our minds to be comforted by something that we think might be true. Yes. And some of these things seem so obvious, that, you know, <clears throat> uh, that they could be true, that it just makes you feel better thinking that it is. Yeah, it's a good enough answer. You know, oh, good. Now I have a good enough answer. I can get on with my life. Right. <laughs> you know, why am I a failure in life? Well, I can just blame this ethnic group and say it was their fault. You know, they're or more Bigfoot or yeah. Bigfoot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm a big fan of Sasquatch. I, you guys may make fun, but I I kind of like him out there on the trail runs with me. But there is a I mean there is a sort of dark side to some of this stuff. When I um, you know in my field of education, one of the things that's most shocking is that something like eighty or ninety percent of people engaged in educational administration believe and implement policies based on neuro myths. Keep going. What's that? What's a neuro myth? A a, a essentially a false understanding of brain function, <laughs> uh, you know, believing that learning styles exist, for instance, is probably one of the most persistent neuro myths or that you have hemispheres of the brain as a neuro myth. That's not true. Right. And that we only use 10% of our brain. That's a neuro myth. So we have all these things that sort of have seeped into our culture you know, and but by far, I think the biggest one is the belief in learning styles. There's no such thing as learning styles, and that's been disproved for 50 years now. Are you talking like visual, auditory? Yeah, that's, that's, none of that exists. No, I learned that in college 25 years ago. I'm sure it exists. That's a neuro myth. <laughs> yeah, that is so it is a thing that people teach that is false and that has been false for many, disproven for many years. And Whack. Uh, so what is hmm. an interesting field of study for me is the effect that this persistent belief in these neuro myths have on public policy. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, people, yeah, <laughs> Commissioner Jerky, you are correct. There are people who are only using 10% of their people. Yeah, thank you, Commissioner <laughs> Jerky, for not calling yeah. me out by yeah. name. Yeah. All right. We have, um, <laughs> we have... Um, three minutes or less to make sure this isn't the longest show in our, in our 50 shows. Yeah. So Tony, Steve, or uh, Tony or Steve, you're the only two that haven't jumped in. Steve, you're up. Um, yeah. Hi, hi guys. I, I really enjoy this. Um, I've read a lot about um, conspiracy theories and that type of thing. It's just a fascinating subject to me, not because I believe in them because I don't believe in any of them. Um, hmm. But I, 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 my, my interest is, why do people believe in them? And from what I've read, the best explanation I could get, it was kind of touched on earlier by Bart, um, that, that people want answers. And when they don't have answers, they make up something or they spread something that they've heard that gives them an answer. And that works because they want certainty. I, I've mentally, from an early age, been perfectly content with, I don't know right now. That's a fine thing to say. Now, I'll continue to search and try to find some answers that, that make sense, but I don't know is an okay thing. So I, I, I don't really feel a need to dig into a conspiracy theory. The other thing I wanted to thought real quick, um, I, I, I read a lot 
by a, uh, a guy named uh, Michael Shermer. He's the president of the Skeptic Society. And, hmm. and he publishes a magazine, Skeptic Magazine. And excellent. Um, he does excellent looks at conspiracy theories, why people are believing specific ones, and refuting what they're saying as to why this really isn't a true thing. Um, very interesting subject matter. Very interesting guy to look up and, and see what he might say on the subject. So thank you, guys. Is, I, I and really this is it. you're welcome. And this was in the chair of my local library board. Thank you, Steve, for saying you don't know. I thought there was a book on that. All right, Tony, you got are. the last. Yeah, there are. Um, uh, last call, Tony. You don't have to take it, but we're like 30 seconds away from our record. Well, I think that uh, Professor Tootle is well positioned to answer this question, which is, was D. Boone, the leader of the, the Minutemen, uh, killed by the CIA, driven off the road? So mm -hmm. I think he could be an authoritative answer to that. So Yeah, I have to say, I don't know. But, oh. I don't know. <laughs> but probably not. Probably not. <laughs> Dang! Yeah, that's, I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's, that is a good one. Uh, yeah. But you know, it, it, one of the things is that there are there there have been actual conspiracies. You know, there are times when when people do get together and collude with one another in order to achieve a result. And so, and sometimes weird and crazy stuff. I mean, the Jim Jones thing. I mean, there are there are some weird people out there doing some weird stuff that other people jump onto it. I I don't get it. Yeah, I, I mean the the. Uh, well, <laughs> there were people in, at the January 6th riots who were conspiring to achieve a specific result. So there were conspiracies within those events. Uh, and I was going to use the Civil War as an example, but, but we don't have to go back to the Civil War. Uh, uh, it, it, you know, and often, uh, you know, well-intentioned conspiracies are sometimes even... Uh, um, go off the rails, uh, you know, because they're trying to achieve some larger result. But um, yeah, I don't, we, we don't need to go down those paths. We're, we're over time. We are over time. Uh, Professor, thanks for your time. I, clearly, we're going to do a whole new show on Bigfoot um, because that's an area that I have an interest in. Um, well, you know, the, the, one of my favorite podcasts uh, is the Jonah Goldberg podcast. And he has a special subgenre where they they pay particular attention to Bigfoot erotica. You are I don't that kind of grosses me out. But you are <laughs> kidding. Joan has something on Bigfoot. I've never heard of that. Bigfoot, Yikes. Bigfoot erotica. The, the erotic literature written about Bigfoot. It, oh my God! And these people vote. Yeah. And I'm just leaving us with that. All right. Okay, Professor, you're great. Unfortunately, I got to go like I did last week. So no after action review. Thank you all. Tony, Steve, Bart, uh, Chrissy.